This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to TST Training. I'm Bernard Melson, MD of TST Training. And today we're happy to deliver to you a new webinar on the ISTQB Advanced Level Test Automation Engineer course. This is a version two course for us. We'd achieved 80% on version one, but we're not satisfied with that. So we developed a version two. Uh, with Rosie Sheldon, a senior trainer, and John Young, senior trainer. Now, today, Rosie is going to be presenting to you. So, without further ado, she knows far more about this than I do. I'll hand over to her to get going. Thank you, Bernard. So, my name is Rosie Sheldon, and I'll be presenting the webinar today. I trust you can all hear me. And so that others can't hear you, please could you put yourselves on mute? I'll be taking a few questions at the end. Now, if you want to know more about the Test Automation Engineer course, please do contact. The next one's quite soon, on Monday the 16th of December in London, and then on the 27th of January in London. This webinar is being recorded and will go on our website tomorrow, tsg-training.org.uk. The Test Automation Engineer course is useful for a wide variety of people, both those who create and make decisions about test automation and those who automate the tests. I'll be giving you an overview of what the Test Automation Engineer course covers and then highlight various areas from the syllabus. The Test Automation Engineer course sits with the Security Tester alongside the core advanced courses, that is the Test Manager course, which focuses on the skills and the knowledge needed by test managers and test leaders, the Advanced Test Analyst course, which focuses on business and functional testers, and the Advanced Technical Test Analyst course, which focuses on technical testers and engineers and the skills they need. To sit the exam for any of these advanced courses, you need to have passed the ISTQB Foundation in Software Testing course. You may like to look at the TSG training website for webinars on these and also other topics. As you can see from the scope, Part of the course concerns designing, developing, maintaining the test automation solution. But the course is also about the concepts behind automating functional tests, along with various processes and how these fit with test management, configuration management, defect management, development processes, and of course, quality assurance. And regardless of what life cycle you're using, this course uh, has something for you. These are the eight sections of the course. Almost a quarter of the marks in the exam are from questions in section three, and the next largest topics being two and four and five. Test automation can bring a variety of benefits and can be used for different tasks, as you can see here. The course covers the thinking behind designing the testware so that it's created in a way that's both fit for purpose now and in the future. And the testware might be for implementing automated test cases, monitoring and controlling the execution of automated tests, or interpreting, reporting and logging the automated test results. And to achieve success in automation, you need to know what you're trying to achieve. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. Who is driving the introduction of automation? What are their objectives? Is it one of these or several? It's very important to know what the objectives are before embarking on automation. But it's also important to know what cannot be achieved, to be realistic to the stakeholders. Not all manual tests can or indeed should be automated, for instance. However, there are advantages to using automation. You may have heard or experienced some of these. Maybe these have driven your objectives. Certainly, the advantages are talked about and emphasised. The advantages associated with the tests tend to be focused on. But for example, good use of resource is also crucial. Incidentally, many of the course slides use mind map format like this to support learning.
The disadvantages must also be considered when creating the business case for automation. These costs shouldn't be underestimated or swept under the carpet. For instance, some approaches to scripting may take longer initially, but make ongoing script maintenance more cost effective. Any change needs to be carefully managed and the team typically needs support and training. You can see here, this slide refers to TAS maintenance. I've mentioned the test automation solution already, the TAS. And to quote the glossary, it's a realization or an implementation of the test automation architecture. It's a combination of components implementing a specific test automation assignment. And those components might include commercial off the shelf test tools, test automation frameworks, as well as test hardware. These four areas here hugely influence how test automation progresses, the likelihood of its success. For instance, the test automation architecture needs to align to the soot architecture and needs to be able to develop as the soot develops. The TAA's maintainability, performance and learnability will affect its success. The soot needs to be designed for testability in case of API testing, this could mean more classes, modules, or the command line interface needing to be exposed as public so they can be tested. There needs to be an automation, a test automation strategy that considers, for instance, the costs, benefits, and risks of applying automation to different parts of the soot, e.g. old versus new code, um, new applications versus legacy systems, complex parts of the application versus straightforward areas. And then the test automation framework. This is a tool that provides an environment for test automation, usually a test harness and test libraries. But it needs to be easy to use, well documented and attainable to support a consistent approach to automating tests. And once automation has started to be implemented, your organization might ask you, when will we see some benefit? They'll want to know if its investments paying off, are the objectives of automation being achieved? And if not, when? And this brings us to metrics. Many different measures can be used to monitor the test automation strategy and its effectiveness. They're both internal and external metrics, and I'm gonna highlight automation benefits today. Maybe you need to measure the number of hours manual test efforts saved to demonstrate that the automation strategy is working and that the test automation objectives are being realized. Or is it about how many extra test cycles are run? Or the increase in risk coverage, requirements coverage? Maybe some defects are being found sooner because testing using test hooks could start earlier. There are many benefits, but they are easy to forget because the amount of effort to build automated tests. And this is why many automation projects fail along with the cost of their maintenance. And this is why the approach to scripting is so crucial along with the skill and experience of the test automation engineer. The effort to build the automated tests needs to be monitored. And one way to do this is to use the equivalent manual test effort, EMTE. Now this is where you compare what takes the most effort for manual testing and what takes the most effort for automated testing. Um, that is the test execution for manual testing and the test creation for automated testing. So if it takes an hour to execute a manual script and three hours to create the same automated script, when the automated script has been run three times, it's broken even, so to speak, and the build cost is three times EMTE. The EMTE, along with other metrics collected, can be reported on. The logs give detail, but the test execution report is more of a concise summary. 
This higher level of detail may suffice for some stakeholders, but others can still drill down to a greater level of detail if needed. But to report, you have to have something to report on. And how you get to that point, how do you transition from manual testing to an automated environment? This syllabus section addresses where might be the most appropriate place to start your automation of manual tests. I'm going to highlight three of the suitability criteria, the frequency of use and the maturity of the test process and the complexity to automate. It's easy just to focus on regression testing for automation, but why are those tests so beneficial to automate? Well, because more releases mean more regression testing and the larger the benefit of automating the tests. So the return on investment is higher and the risks are mitigated. So the key question is about how often a test needs to be run, its frequency of use. Another consideration is the maturity of the test process. Hopefully there's an established manual test process as adding test automation is going to add a development process into the mix. Effective manual testing following a structured, disciplined, repeatable process is good grounding for introducing automation. Otherwise, another layer is being added to a flaky setup. Now, manual testing relies on competent, experienced testers bringing their knowledge to the manual test script. How easy will it be to automate those scripts? It may be very complex. There are huge benefits from test automation. Repeatedly executing scripts for testers is tedious and time consuming, and people make mistakes. However, the scripts might be complex to automate to the point that some scripts might not be cost effective to automate. Maybe the soot's not compatible with the existing TAS or the large number of systems needed to be included in the tests, the interactions and interfaces, external systems, aspects of usability testing. But don't forget the time needed to test the automation test scripts themselves. And these experienced manual testers might not have had any previous exposure to automated testing. Hopefully you have some more technical testers in the test team, as with automation, the test roles become more specialized. And this can cause anxiety though. Although training and mentoring can help, change needs to be carefully managed for automation to succeed. The course closes, and so will I, by looking forwards at options for improving test automation. The TAS needs ongoing maintenance to keep synchronized with the SUD. But how can it be improved? What adds most value to a project? What were your objectives? Typically, the scripting approach itself can be improved upon. So, for instance, recognizing the overlap between scripts when test cases or steps are repeated. Creating library functions will increase maintainability. And where test steps are similar but not identical, parameterization can be introduced. Maybe you need to consider is the best weight mechanism being used because you want to avoid hard coded weights. Stop on that one. More effective approach is to use dynamic weights, so no time is wasted. It's more efficient because the polling means that as soon as the condition is true, the testing continues, it moves on. But of course, a timeout mechanism must be included here. Even better than that, use the soot event mechanism. That's more reliable, but then your scripting language must support it and the soot needs to offer the events to the test application. And again, a timeout mechanism is needed. So in summary, Test automation engineers are very varied, different responsibilities, and this course covers the spectrum at the advanced level. Please do ask any questions while I highlight some of the courses you might also be interested in. Here is also the information again about the next course on the 16th of December 
in London and the 27th of January. So other courses, there's the Advanced Test Manager course, Advanced Test Analyst, Advanced Security and Advanced Technical Test Analyst that I mentioned earlier. And for those you do need to have sat the foundation course, there's also the Scrum Master Pro, Selenium Web Driver, and many others if you go to our website or email Paula or phone Paula. So back to questions. Thank you, Jason, for your question about open source and how many people use open source and what the drive is there. This is very much dependent on different organizations' approach to open source tools. Many very significant large organizations are very pro open source tools others though have decided they don't want to go down that road they don't like that model and i would always say take an open mind have a look at commercial tools open source tools in addition to creating in-house tools to see what's the best option for the situation that you are in Emma, thank you for your question about, is there an introduction to automation course? The answer is yes. As I've already said, you do need to sit the foundation course in order to do the test automation engineer course, the advanced course. But TSG also does a one day, very hands-on introduction to automation course. And we look forward to welcoming you on that. And John, thank you for your question about automation and the return on investment. I touched on EMT earlier, but that's only one aspect of the return on investment. So I'm glad you brought this question up because it's a critical one and often it's included in the business case and people need to have confidence about when to start automating, where to start automating, and these questions need answers. So you need to consider how many scripts you've got and what their complexity is. You need to throw into the mix the frequency of the change of those scripts, but also for your applications, how stable are they? How long is it going to be before they're replaced? You need to remember how long it's going to take to develop the scripts. And you need to work out the cost of each manual test and the coverage achieved. So consider the cost of each automation run and the project return and investment time. So it's a, uh, an important area, it's critical, and incidentally, it's also covered in the advanced test manager course, this area of return on investment, it's very important. So thank you very much for all your questions. I'm now going to hand over and say goodbye. So thank you very much. Excellent uh, webinar as usual, and everyone, if you're still there, please remember these additional courses are available through the advanced level. If you want to know more about them, contact us or call Paula on the uh, toll free number you can see there. That's about it, guys. Thanks very much for your time. We hope you enjoyed it today, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thanks very much. <laughs>